It's Ben Housel here, and here in this very basic Photoshop tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at how we use adjustment layers to adjust color, to adjust saturation, um, and also to, to adjust curves and levels um, in our images in Adobe Photoshop. So we'll dive straight in. We're gonna have a, a look at this uh, quick run through, um, basically how we can modify color um, using adjustment layers. And the great thing about adjustment layers is that they're non-destructive. So any adjustments that we make, um, we can always reverse that. We can turn these layers on and off as well. And once we get further into working with adjustment layers, then we can use masks to change certain areas of our image, um, which is very cool. So let's dive in and have a look at how we work with adjustment layers in Adobe Photoshop. So before we get started with working in Photoshop here, we're just gonna to go to Window, Workspace, and select the Essentials view. And if you already have the Essentials view selected, then just go to Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. And that's gonna mean we're all looking at the same thing on screen. So basically, in this quick tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we add three different types of adjustment layers. We're gonna talk a little bit about what they do. So the first uh, thing to do is to find the adjustment layers. And basically what this does is it will add a layer to our Photoshop document that we can then modify, but it doesn't change the original image. So we'll just go to our adjustments here and we can find these adjustment layers in two different places. So the first is in our adjustments panel um, on the right hand side, or in our layers panel right down at the bottom, we can find our fill and adjustment layers and we can add one of those. So basically the ones that we're gonna look at here are our levels, our curves and our hue saturation. And we'll just kind of talk a little bit about what those three different kinds of adjustment layers do. So we'll go for our levels adjustment layer here. And when we add an adjustment layer, it will basically leave the background image intact and nothing will happen. Um, but what we'll get up in the properties here is this histogram of our image. Um, and then these variables of the dark areas of the image, the light areas of the image, and then the, the midtones, and then our output levels as well. So with the levels adjustment, um, with this midpointer here, if we drag this to the right, we're basically adding more dark pixels to the darker areas of the image, so our image is gonna get much darker. So you can see now as I drag it to the left, more of those pixels are moving into the lighter part of the image, so from the mid-tone to the whites, and basically we're getting um, a much lighter image. Okay, we'll move this back to the middle, back to the one. If we move uh, this arrow on the bottom left, then everything to the left of that arrow is gonna turn black. So we're actually, in this particular instance, clipping our image. So if we drag from the right, you can see we're clipping our image again, so everything becomes quite contrasted um, in that image as we do that. If you've added adjustment layers um, and you don't like what you see and you just wanna kinda of go back to the beginning again, then you can hit the little hooked arrow at the bottom here that will reset those layers. Now the output levels are basically saying that anything between these levels is gonna be output. So everything from black here to white is gonna be outputted in the image. So if I actually push this to the right, then my image is gonna gradually become grayer and grayer and grayer um, because I'm not having any dark grays or blacks in that image. So I'm kind of washing it out. And this is actually really useful if, if you want to overlay text over an image, but, but you don't want to increase the contrast of the image. So basically it's going to kind of neutralize it a little bit, but we're losing all the blacks and we're losing all the whites. So we're kind of muting it. So that's the, the levels adjustment layer. If we turn off this levels adjustment layer, you can see that we go back to the beginning. So any adjustments that we add, we can also remove them as well. So we'll go up to our adjustments here and we'll add our curves layer. So the curves can do some similar things to our levels adjustment layer. So we can increase the, the contrast by pulling in our black and white points, the left and right. So we're basically moving all the color information into the, the middle of the image here. So everything is becoming much darker and lighter. And so we get that higher contrast again. And if we actually use the curve here, if we click on the curve and lift it up, we're gonna make the image lighter and if we move it down, we're gonna make it darker. So we're doing some similar adjustments um, that we do in the levels adjustment, but we've got a bit more kind of bespoke control here. So if we select the middle and kind of lift it up a little bit, we can drop back down the highlights. So we can basically adjust our image so that it's still darker, but that we get those mid-tones as well. So we're actually have a bit more control than we do in our levels adjustments for adjusting different parts of the image. So we could literally just lift up the very mid-tones here of that image. Or if we wanted to just lighten the darker parts of the image, 
So the floorboards there, and we can do that. So basically we've got some control over different parts of our image. Now one tool that I normally have up when I'm making any adjustments like this um, is the histogram tool. So if we go to window and histogram, this shows us our different channels um, for this image. So I'm gonna expand this out and we'll have the all channels view. So what we can see here is the reds, greens, and blues of that image. So with the level adjustment, um, we'll turn off the curves and reselect our levels adjustment. Now when we're reselecting an adjustment layer here, you can see what happens is I need to sometimes click on this little black and white circle before I can modify things. So here I'm selecting the mask and here I'm selecting the levels. And you can see that up here in the properties too, I can flip between those two different elements. So you can see, because I've changed my output levels, when I'm modifying this now, we can see that changing in the histograms as well. So we can see what our original histogram is here, but we can see what our histogram has changed to um, in here as well. And basically, we're going from the darker areas of our image across here um, to the lighter parts of our image across on the right-hand side. So you can see there's no light part to this image. So effectively, it's kind of darkened off as we've drop down that output level so it almost looks like it's a kind of nighttime image now rather than a kind of bright uh, mid middle of the day image. Um, we don't have any pure black in our image so if we lift this to the left here you can see we start to move some of those blacks which will be the reds, greens and blues mixing together here um, into that darker area of the image. And then if we pull this across the whites again you'll see we get those whites there. Now you can see there's nothing in the white part of the image. So basically for the reds and greens, we don't have any kind of real lighter parts of that image. So the reason for that is that we have this red and blue chair here. Um, if we drag this, okay, you can see we kind of brighten up that image a bit more, kind of liven it up a little bit. So we've got a before and after, so you can see it's kind of dull and we've improved the contrast of our image by playing around with our levels adjustments. Let's turn that off so we can see the before. And then if we come to our adjustment layers down here, you can see we can add a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm gonna move this up to the top so we've dealt with them all in the right order. So with our hue saturation adjustment layer, we can do a few things. So we can make crazy things happen to our image by just moving this around. Um, and because there's not really that much color in the lighter part of the background here or in the floorboards, we're basically changing the colors of the chairs, which is kind of cool. Okay, we can increase the saturation and we can reduce the saturation of those particular chairs. We can increase and decrease the lightness as well. And again, if we mess up, we can hit this little hooked arrow that will allow us to reset that. Now, the last thing we can do as well that we'll kind of cover here is if we select this little finger and we click on the, the reds here and drag to the left, you can see we're pulling all the color out of the red parts of the image. So it's actually desaturating all the reds in the image. Okay, so you can see we've basically made that red chair grayscale but left the blue chair there. So basically this uh, button, when we click it like this, and just drag it across a color will allow us to desaturate that color. Again, we can hit that little hooked arrow to reset it. So if for instance, I wanted my background here to be a bit more of a cleaner white, I can select that, click here, and then I can drag to the left as well. And it's grabbing a bit of red too. Um, and what we can do here is we can modify what's being affected um, in that adjustment by dragging this to the left and right as well. So we can basically select what's being desaturated as we move this around. So we can tighten that up and you can see we're still brightening up some of the highlights, but we're not brightening up the whole of that red chair. But when we move this around, we do. Let's reset that again. We can also, um, if we drop down the saturation here for the whole image, if we come to our hue saturation adjustment layers, and this isn't necessarily a hue saturation adjustment layer thing, it's to do with the layer below. If we double click on this and we look at this underlying layer option, you can see that basically we can adjust only 
the parts of the image that are lighter. So basically our chair is not lighter, so we can keep the saturation in that because we've desaturated it. And then if we hold down the Alt key here, we can kind of mix it in a little bit. So that separates those two little arrows there. So if we come back here and we lighten up now, you can see I'm lightening the background, but I'm not lightening the chairs. So we're basically able to control different parts of the background by working with this under the blending options, um, the lighter and darker parts of the image. So we can kind of mix in those. And this is a kind of blended area here between these two arrows. So if we click OK here, um, you can see we've got control now by doing that over the lighter parts of the image um, and the saturation of those lighter parts of the image. So I've pulled all the color out there. And I think we'll reset this again now, and then we'll just look at one last thing with the hue saturation. And now actually we'll just come to our hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'm going to double click on that and just reset my underlying layer blending. Click OK there. And now if I select the finger here and hold down Command on the Mac or Control on the PC and click on the red, then I drag to the left. You can see I'm changing just the color of that one chair. So rather than adjusting the color of both the chairs, it's just going to allow me to adjust the color of the chair on the right where I'm holding down Control or Command and clicking. And as you're doing this for the first time, it's worth keeping an eye on those histograms because you'll notice how they're modifying. So we'll see the balance if we come all the way to the left here, to the oranges, then the balance of these colors changes. So we change the amount of color um, in this particular mid-tone of the image um, as we do that. So that's a quick overview of how to work with um, the adjustment layers. They're adjustment layers, so basically we can turn them off and we can turn them on again and modify them without causing any destruction to the, the image in the background. So any changes we make, um, we can always undo. So let's just do one more thing here. So if we have an image uh, like this, we go, for instance, to our hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to drop down the saturation all the way, so make it a black and white image. Now, along with our adjustment layers, we have this layer mask as well. Now if I select my brush tool from my toolbar across the left and I'm going to change my brush to a black brush, so I'm just going to flip these round by clicking the little hooked arrow. Now when I drag across this foam box you can see I can paint back in the colour that was there previously. So basically I'm painting a little bit of black, you can see on the layer mask there, and that is removing the color adjustment um, for that part of the image. So you can see I get quite a nice uh, kind of contrast there between the foreground and the background um, of this image. Um, so the part that is saturated and the part that is desaturated. And the nice thing about these layers that we're painting on here um, is that if we make a mistake, so if I grab some of the brick here, I can flip around my black and white color and then paint that back in. So we can always go back and modify and recorrect things that we've done. And the same for this option too. So if I reset my layer now, I still have my mask there. If I reset the saturation and the hue adjustment, then I can come back in and modify that again. Okay. Yeah, and we can get quite psychedelic quite quickly. Let's just desaturate it. So that's an overview of working with adjustment layers um, in a couple of different ways. And they're great because they're non-destructive. Um, if you have any questions about adjustment layers, about Photoshop, about Final Cut Pro, then do leave a comment below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.